Hello and welcome. Today we're going to make a chicken cottage pie. Kind of like a shepherd's pie, but with chicken. So, chicken cottage pie. The whole thing and putting it together is going to be kind of quick and easy, so it should be no problem. Let's get to the ingredients and we'll go from there. So, for our ingredients, we need one 6.5 ounce can of mushrooms, one 15 ounce can of mixed vegetables, one 10 ounce can of chicken, two to four cups of mashed potatoes, and I'll explain why that's a fairly large variable there in a moment. Two tablespoons of flour, a quarter teaspoon salt, a half teaspoon pepper, one teaspoon garlic powder, one teaspoon onion powder, a quarter cup of chicken broth, and a quarter cup of cream or milk. You can also use non-dairy milk, but the ones that seem to work the best would be hemp or oat milk. All right, so with what's going to be most of our prep is the mushrooms. And the canned mushrooms are generally going to be a bit stems and pieces so you kind of want to dice them up and get them to a much smaller amount so that they blend into the entire dish as we're doing it now this is a 6.5 ounce including the liquid we do want to save about a teaspoon of the liquid because we're going to put that into our liquids that we use later and otherwise it's drained so if you're using fresh mushrooms that's going to be about four ounce mushrooms diced fine and that should be perfect in it now when I made this, if you really like mushrooms, you'll probably want to increase the amount of mushrooms. Oh, look, I launched a can. In. <laughs> Maybe two cans if you're doing the cans, or, you know, uh, six to seven ounces, probably not fully eight ounces, but a little bit more on that if you like mushrooms a lot. Uh, otherwise, the taste, with the way it is, it's just going to sort of blend in with the rest of the taste, and it'll be good, but it's not going to be one of the more prominent tastes. All right, next up for our mashed potatoes. In this case, I am just using instant mashed potatoes and follow the instructions on the box. Nobody needs to see me do that. Uh, if you wanted to use the regular, one of the other easy methods like poking the holes and putting them in the microwave for 10 minutes or, you know, just boiling, if any type of mashed potatoes will work for this. And once I show you the uh, container, you'll, sh you'll see why it's between two and four cups. Okay, and with what little prep we need to do being done, we want to take our flour and just kind of dust it in here. And I... You're just adding a small layer so that since all of our ingredients are wet, we don't want the flour clumping together. So I want to just spread it out. If there's anything clumping going on when I put it in there, again, I don't want it. So once you have that all broken up, then you want to add your mushrooms, chicken, most of your main ingredients first because we're going to mix these all together and we want to just get the chicken and the mushrooms in at the beginning because we want to make sure that all of that stuff gets really well coated with half of our flour and our seasonings gets mixed in really nice before we add the liquids and by adding all the dry ingredients before the liquids we're making sure that it gets into all the little nooks and crannies unfortunately I didn't quite spread it out enough on mine so there was a couple of pockets where there was just a little bit too much pepper and that's just because i didn't s sort of sprinkle it into the mix as i should have once you've got that all mixed together then we're going to add the rest of our flour on top of that and awkwardly tap on a container for way too long the reason we divided that up I like that again is to just just keep anything from clumping and again so, so once we start adding our liquids if we didn't mix it up like this at first and keep it as dry as possible, then they would have a much, much higher likelihood of clumping. Now we're going to add our vegetables and then finally our uh, liquids here in a moment. Again, once you add the next vegetables in, we just want to make sure everything's nice and mixed up. And that way, again, some more vegetables are going to get coated with some of the flour at this point. On the liquids, I saved about a teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of the liquids from the mushrooms the chicken and the mixed vegetables and those are what the other liquid you see me having there is and the reason i did that is it just adds a little bit more flavor for everything and kind of helps everything merge together and meld in the flavors and that's going to make everything kind of taste a little bit better and have a little bit more of a depth to it as we add our liquids you can use pretty much any kind of milk or cream that you want um, and almond milk and soy milk were not great but uh, hemp or oat milk work pretty well for regular milks if you use cream or heavy cream you probably won't need as much flour so you'd probably only use like maybe a teaspoon teaspoon and a half whereas here we're using a little bit more than that so once we have that all mixed we're going to top it with our potatoes 
All right, so I mentioned that it was two to four cups of mashed potatoes and that was a wide range. Now, if you see this, you can kind of barely see it. I kind of wish I'd gotten a slightly better picture, but this won't work. You can kind of see where the potatoes go up to. And if you want that super nice looking Instagrammable kind of thing, you'll probably want to have about four cups of mashed potatoes so it goes above the top. But for people like me who don't want to make a mess and I'm not too worried about it, you're probably looking at more of like a two cups or so like that. If you end up using a pie plate or a uh, square baking dish, that you're probably going to have to double the ingredients and you'll probably end up with about eight servings doing it that way. All right, and the second to last step, or last, depending on how you want to do it, before we go into the oven, we're just going to take our mashed potatoes and kind of smooth it out on top. I'm going to do most of that off camera, but what I wanted you to see at first, though, is you want to kind of pull it out in smaller pieces so they don't sink into the mixture too much. And that'll keep you from having to having too much go underneath and then it looks like you don't have enough potatoes on there, but you really do. And sometimes if you don't catch that, you'll end up with like a really thick layer of mashed potatoes, which is good, but probably not what you were looking for. So like I said, I'm going to take care of this off screen for a moment. And once I am all finished, I'll show you what that looks like. And there's one more thing I need to point out that I did forget to take a picture of. And I'm going to have to apologize about that one. So, what I did was I smoothed everything out, and again, I'll, I did that off camera, it's not a big deal. But, the one thing that I do regret not showing was, uh, after I, everything had gotten smooth, I actually took a fork and dragged it through to make basically little channels, just a difference in division. And when you see the final product here in just a moment, once we're done with the explanation of what the oven temperature and all that is. Once you see the final product, you'll see what they did and how the fork affected it, and I kind of wish I had a picture of that. So, let's get over to that oven and, and we'll be almost ready. So, for the baking part, we're going to want to put that into a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Now, this is to give the flour and the fat and anything else in there and the juices to kind of all start to thicken up just a little bit. Everything in this is, recipe is already ready and edible at this point but it's just making sure all the flavors melt and combine well once that initial 15 minutes is done you're going to want to set it to broil and broil as the temperature most ovens have that if not whatever the highest temperature your oven has is and then you're going to want to check it every five minutes after that until it looks something like this and you can see what I was talking about with the fork now, where I just used the fork to create some raised areas, raised strips down here. And those raised strips will get browned when we're doing our broil broil at a much faster rate than the stuff in between. And that's going to give it a really nice look when it's on the plate, as well as a nice set of contrasting textures as well. And with that, we've made chicken cottage pie or maybe a mashed potato casserole, depending on where you're at. This one's really easy. It's all just pantry ingredients, very easily available and not, and all shelf stable. If you wanted to replace any of the ingredients with fresh or, you know, more homemade versions or more non-processed versions, you could do that and it would improve the taste considerably. But at this point, you can basically pull this out and have it ready in about a half an hour with not too much work. So I hope you enjoyed yourself. And if you did and aren't already, I would would encourage you to subscribe. I'll be sharing recipes like this as well, and eventually once the pandemic is over, I'll get back to the fundamentals, which is just going to be a, a, a task-based learn to cook series. So I hope you enjoyed yourself and have a great meal.